With our blood and our souls, we'll fight for you, O oh martyrs, people chant just outside of the Salmania hospital. Still stunned and shocked, they pray for the souls of those who died. Within moments of arriving here, a man came up to us imploring us to go to the morgue and see the bodies of those who had been killed. He said it was evidence of the types of weapons the authorities were using against them. The three bodies are all pockmarked by the pellet bullets the police used. Wiping away tears, these women say they wanted to see what the government had done for themselves. This is Ali Ahmed, he's 34 years old, and he followed us out of the morgue because he wanted to speak to us. He'd been sleeping in the square for three nights, and then the attack happened. This is the lie of lies, Ali says angrily when we ask him if, like the foreign minister claimed, the police warned the demonstrators before the attack. The one thing that never, ever crossed my mind was that they would attack us like this, he says. It was a massacre. The government says they used a minimum of force, claiming their forces also suffered casualties. They say they found firearms and knives among the protesters. Inside, we meet Zainab Farda. She and her two children were sleeping in a tent with other women and their kids when they woke up coughing on tear gas. And then they set the tent on fire. It went up in flames around us, she says. My six-year-old grabbed onto me and said, Mommy, Mommy, call the police. And I had to say to her, it's the police that is doing this to us. So as we're walking through the hospital, we just went past the resuscitation room where a man is being treated on his last breath. It's still a very intense and tragic atmosphere here at the hospital. Habib Abdullah, an ambulance worker, tells us the police wouldn't let the ambulances through. We had to walk, and then they shot us, he says hardly able to breathe. There's been another casualty, a man who was on the operating table, a young man we're being told, just passed away. 22-year-old Ali bled out. The doctors couldn't save him. His family lines the corridor outside his room. Unable to fully grasp what has happened, their emotions raw. His father, Ahmed Abdullah, has this to say about the king. He's killer. His family tells us Ali was about to finish his engineering degree. His brother Hassan was with him at the demonstration site. The two got separated. Now Ali is dead. Don't let my brother's blood go to waste, he pleads. Arwa Damon Siana, Manama, Bahrain.